Hi guys, another quick tutorial. Just going to do some dynamics today using a motion capture character here, which uh, Autodesk kindly supply us with inside Maya, and this is the kind of look we're going for. So we've just got some ivy, and this guy's kind of like running through a corridor, and it's very basic, but it's just the idea, and that's why I tend to try and give you guys within a tutorial is the idea, and that's so. You've got the fundamental knowledge behind, um, uh, you know, what needs to be done to uh, get you to this point, and you can go off and do all of your artisticness to it. Otherwise, I'll be here for hours creating tutorials, which I don't really want to be. So let's get started from the start. Actually, I'm going to do a new scene because I don't leave anything nasty behind. So. Everything starts with a cube, usually. Let's just get this up here, move it around a bit, and delete these two ends. Bring the timeline up, up a little bit. There we go, there's our guy here, and I don't really want to be uh, selecting this again, so I'm just going to put on a layer and reference that. Uh, let's get our character in, so we're going to go to the visor, and I'm going to go over to mocap examples, and in here you can just middle mouse drag these into the scene, or you can right click and do import like that, but I like to drag them, I don't know why. Um, so, they come in with a little locator, and unfortunately they come in at the size of Godzilla, so we're going to want to scale it down somewhat, maybe not that much, but we can just artistically scale it up a bit and now we can rotate it and just stick a number nine zero in there and we've got our dude in place no hassle okay so let's just scroll along see where he starts and stops give us an idea where to put our curves so let's just go to the side view and I'm going to go to create a CV curve tool and I'm just going to create a few CVs to create a curve why to go back to the tool again and I'm gonna just do a couple of variations then duplicate them across as opposed to duplicating them all. Piano. Right okay so let's grab these duplicate bring them over here and I might just put one there and maybe one here and one here maybe one there and let's just rewind the animation series starts Pop in there, come back here, and I'm just going to uh, create a small amount of variation, like so. So it does it touch him when he comes through. I could do if touch him a bit more. Where's that locator gone? I see you. I see you there. So let's just reposition him a little bit. That's about it. Okay, so we've got a guy and we've got a curve, so if we just get the outliner open. There we go. And I'm going to go and make these curves dynamic right now. So, in Dynamics menu, in here, and we're going to make selected curves dynamic. Just check and you know, reset this in here. Hit apply. And so, we've got some curves that are dynamic, and we can see them wiggling. Um, at the moment, they're not doing what I want them to do do they're um, constrained to the base and the tip so we can go into the follicles menu and select all of the follicles go into the channel layer editor and in the point lock area here it's set to both ends as you can see I didn't lie to you and we can go to base and now they will be dynamic at the bottom also and the tops are constrained as well so the output curves are there I think it's going to hide them now um, I just hit the wrong thing. This is a bit silly, really. <clears throat> I think I selected the option where you could see the old curves. I uh, didn't really want to do that, to be honest. It's... So, look, bear with me. I'm just going to go back a couple of steps and get rid of that.
Right, back to normal again. Okay, great. So now we got our curves, and we've got our dude running for our curves. Um, he's currently not interacting with these curves at all. Um, obviously, a nucleus solver gets created when we create any type of, type of end system in Maya. So I'm just going to go and up the gravity a bit because I know that I'm going to need more. So the next thing we want to do is make this dude interact with this. And if you was creating your own character, then you would probably want to be um, not doing what I'm doing, which is about to uh, create a complete passive collider out of the whole model. But if you've got your own character, you can just create some standing objects that apparently need to joints, etc. So. And now if he runs for it, he should be interacting with it. If he doesn't, I'm going to be angry. And there we go. All good in the hood. So our curve's going a bit bonkers. So before we attach any kind of paint effects to it, I'm just going to go in and have a look at the hair system and see if we can't just calm down some of this madness. Let's just have a little look again at what's going on. Well, he's quite nice. Well, I saw a little... Um, attribute earlier is the stickiness. If we turn the stickiness right up you can get a completely different um, animation. It becomes a little bit more sinister. So we can see we can uh, you know, kill our man which you may or may not want to do depending on your mood. So let's just keep that down to there. So they kind of flick back and go a bit mental really don't they? So I'm just going to select the um, environment, not actually because it's like so, I'm just going to create a passive out of it so that they don't flip over the top here. You see, so they're bouncing back down again now. Didn't lie to you, hair system, so let's go into dynamic properties. You can see we've got different compression, bend resistance and stuff. You can play around with these attributes, but basically if you put these two down to one and one you'll see something very different indeed so everything starts to really drop down and go a bit crazy so 10 is not a bad starting point for both of them the same with bend resistance if you put that up to 10 uh, you'll see that things become a bit snappy and weird and again if you put it down to about 0.1 it's a little bit too bendy so one, not a bad starting point. Um, we've got a stiffness and attraction scale. So the attraction scale is how much it attracts back to its original shape, which we are going to use. Um, but we need to turn up the uh, start curve attract for all of this to be able to kick in. So I'm just going to give it a bit of damp and a bit of attract. That should help slightly. It start to go mess less mental. Mess lentil, less mental. Um, but now it looks like he's running through some elastic bands. So we just want to calm it a bit but just you know help introduce a little bit of damp let's get this right down right. and now I want to go into this area here where the force is so we can sort of dampen down stuff a bit which is what we want. So I'm going to turn up the drag a bit. Still snapping back too much. I think that might be start curve attract stomach. The stiffness scale is very high. There we go. Just going to a bit lower. So you can see things are starting to dampen down a little bit now. Get a bit of motion drag in there. Bit of stretch damp. So like a combination of all these little bits and bobs are gonna get you the sort of look you want. I haven't got any specific numbers for you, it's just a case of playing around with it really. Not gonna lie to you. Now looking a bit better. Right, okay, so for now that will do for me. So now we want to go to our generator, the fires are, we're going to have a look at our paint effects, what are we going to use? Probably, um, da, 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 probably these, this ivy, so I'm going to select the ivy. 
and I'm going to select the hair system by control clicking it and I'm going to go into the in hair and I'm going to assign the paint effects brush to the hair Ooh, there we go so we've got paint effects on our brush and if we play it we can see that it follows it as if by absolute magic so if we now go to the ivy we can obviously scale it up and if we go into the tube section we can add more to the creation area or we can go into behavior forces and we can get it to follow the path a bit more so it's less uh, we can also make it uh, follow the path, the curve, sorry. And we can just go in and add more bits and bobs as we please, but I'll let you play around with all of that. It's hard not to uh, play though, once you start. Right, um, Obviously, you're probably wondering why you can't see the paint effects. Um, if you render it, then you will. Obviously, uh, paint effects only renders in Mars software, so at the end of this, we can convert it to polygons and it'll work with Mineral Ray, Figure Ray, whatever render you use. Um, but if you do want to see it, just go back to the um, paint effects shape node and click Draw as Mesh, and we can start to see it. So you can go in and artistically play around with all that. But for now, I'm going to keep it off because it could slow things down a bit. Excuse me if I'm speaking quickly while I'm trying to get this done um, and under a certain amount of time for you guys to, you know, watch it in really. So there we go, we've got some paint effects going and it's on curves and we've got the passive guy running through them and um, anything more than this I'm going to be taking up too much of your time. Um, Obviously it's not looking 100% but going back in and playing around with some of the damp you're going to get the look you want, I promise you. Um, but I'm trying to keep this under 15 minutes, we're at 12 minutes now. Hopefully you learned something there guys, it's um, fairly straightforward really. Obviously you can use this in, or it doesn't have to be vines and eye of it, it can be anything at all. You can create some curves around a sphere and attach different paint effects to it and make it all dynamic and just have a play around with it. it can, it's fun, you can do some crazy stuff. There you go, that's the, um, that's the idea. Cheers guys.